Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Board, with a look at the Galaxy S5 Mini, the shrunken and cheaper version of the Galaxy S5 with a 4.5 inch instead of 5.1 inch display, a Exynos quad core processor clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, as well as 1.5 gigs of RAM instead of 3 gigs of RAM, and a 8 megapixel camera instead of a 16 megapixel camera with no 4K video recording. It does have some features carried over from the Galaxy S5, including a fingerprint sensor, a heart rate monitor, and IP67 certification. So this means this is water and dust resistant. In terms of water resistance, this means it can be submerged in one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. Now the interesting thing here is that this phone does away with the USB flap and instead uses a special coating to make the USB port water resistant. So that's kind of interesting. Now there are two versions of this phone. There's the Duos as I have here, which is a dual SIM model, which is popular in markets outside of Europe and the US. And then there's the version sold in the US. They all have the same specs. It's just that the Duos model is not compatible with LTE networks in Europe or the US, uh, but does support dual SIMs, which is important in some regions. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing. I'm just gonna pull open this tab. We have a little tray to slide out. Very familiar Samsung packaging with this environmentally friendly uh, soy ink and recyclable packaging. So you can see, again, very familiar experience to every other Samsung phone unboxing. Again, it looks like a shrunken down Galaxy S5. As you can see here, we have the, it's all wrapped in plastic. We're gonna set that aside for just a moment so we can clear the contents. So inside we have our literature, which is not in a language I can read. So you have a quick start guide, which is in English. So you can take a look to see all the features that are available to you and how to remove or install the battery, which we're gonna do in this video. And then we have our accessories. So we have a micro USB charging cable, no USB 3 here. We also have our ear tips for our included headphones, which also include a remote control and microphone. So again, these are the Samsung in-ear style headphones. Now I also have our battery charger here, standard Samsung travel adapter. And of course, with a smaller phone, we get a smaller battery. This is 2100 milliamp hours versus 2800 on the Galaxy S5. So back to the phone, we have a 4.5 inch Super AMOLED display, 720p resolution. So that's good for 326 pixels per inch, which is identical to the iPhone 5S, which is a four inch display at 326 PPI. So let's go ahead and peel off our plastic here. There is that display. Again, it looks just like a Galaxy S5, just kind of shrunken down here. On the back, we have another piece of plastic covering our back panel. As you can see here, this is the white version. And again, same design in every way to the Galaxy S5. So you can see that we have that modern glam look with that sort of pearlescent color, which is kind of nice. Around that eight megapixel camera, we have a piece of plastic protecting the lens. So let's go and peel that off. Now there's a little thumbnail port here to pop off the back cover. So let's go and do that so we can install the battery. So again, you can see this is IP67 certified. So there is a rubber gasket that surrounds the internals of the phone to seal out the battery, the SIM trays, as well as the micro SD card slot. Otherwise the speaker and the camera module and everything else is waterproof. So along the side here, you can see that dual SIM arrangement, SIM 1 and SIM 2, so you can manually select which SIM you want to use at any given time. And up top, we also have our micro SD card slot, which supports 64 gig cards. All right, so let's go ahead and drop in our battery here and snap in our cover. So on the back, you'll find the pretty standard eight megapixel camera, which is pretty much carried over from the Galaxy S4 mini. And then we also have our heart rate sensor just below that, which also incorporates an LED flash. We also have our loudspeaker back here. Again, a rear facing loudspeaker with a little bump out here to prevent you from muffling the speaker when you lay it flat on the surface. Now down below, you find your micro USB charging port, which again is water resistant thanks to a coating. And then you also find your main microphone, which is your mouthpiece. And just like every other Samsung phone, we have our volume rocker on the left-hand side and the sleep-wake power on and off button on the right-hand side. And up top, you'll find a waterproof headphone jack along with an IR LED blaster for controlling your AV equipment and the noise cancellation microphone right next to it. So at the top, we'll find a waterproof earpiece, a 2.1 megapixel front-facing camera, good for 1080p HD video. As you can hear, we just had a notification, which is accompanied by a notification LED light. We also have all the standard sensors, a proximity sensor and ambient light sensor. Toward the bottom, we have a home button, which integrates the fingerprint sensor, as well as a back button and a recent apps button. 
All right, so let's go and take a look at the user interface, starting with the lock screen. So as you can see here, it's pretty familiar stuff if you're used to the Galaxy S5. So on the front, you have your widget for your weather information as well as your pedometer, and you can quickly launch into the camera app just by swiping up. You can also swipe down to get to your notification panel, swipe to unlock, and of course you can activate the fingerprint sensor for unlocking the device, which we'll do a bit later. So on your home screen, you can pinch in and out to see your available home screens. You can add additional home screens like so. You can drag and drop them to the trash can to remove them. You can also press and hold the recent apps button to take you to the home screen editor. So here you can see we have our wallpaper settings, we have our widgets, you can scroll through your widgets just by typing and holding up here. You can also edit your home screen settings. So as you can see here, you can change your transition effect and you can add My Magazine. This is off by default, so I had to enable it. So My Magazine is powered by Flipboard and all I have to do is scroll all the way to the right to find it. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of tiles feeding news and they're all broken down into certain categories like sport and news, noteworthy business and that sort of thing. You can also go up here to change your settings. So if you go to settings here, you can select exactly what appears under your My Magazine. So you can see ones that have been selected here are checked and you can also add certain apps such as Twitter and YouTube. All these apps plug into Flipboard or My Magazine and feed information from that. You can also reposition these just by tapping and holding on them and dragging them, dropping them around. You can tap on them to jump right to them. Now, they're not interactive tiles. So, for example, you can't just flip through the widget itself. You actually have to open it up to start flipping through your stories. Now, when you're in one of these categories, for example, you can see that I'm under Arts and Culture. I can go up to this menu option to go to Arts and Culture. So as you can see, this category is fed by lots of sources and you can select which ones you want followed or not. So on our home screen, we can swipe down to see all of our notifications as well as S Finder and Quick Connect. Again, just like the Galaxy S5, you can swipe through your quick access toggles. You can also go up here to see all your toggles and go right here to edit the toggles that appear in that tray. So you can see all the ones that are available. You can also toggle off the brightness control, which is on by default. And I think that's very handy here. So that's the brightness control. So you can set it to auto, or select your uh, brightness yourself. Of course, you can also swipe out of the way to close an item or open them up like so. And then you have your recent apps button right here. So you can see all your available recent apps. You can swipe them out of the way, access them, or you can go here to close them all. You can also double tap the home button to get to S Voice. What's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? Tuesday will be a high of 80 degrees with scattered thunder and rain showers. Of course, you can also tap and hold the home button to get to Google Now. Okay, Google? What's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? Tomorrow's forecast for Detroit is 77 degrees with a thunderstorm. Now, unlike the Galaxy S5, you do not have multi-window mode on this phone, and that's thanks partly to the fact that we only have 1.5 gigs of RAM here. So you can't tap and hold the back button to get to multi-window mode or swipe in from the right edge. Now, our quick settings is a good way of revealing some of the available features here on the GS5 Mini. So you can see this is stripped down from the standard Galaxy S5. But you will find things like Smart State, which monitors for the presence of your eyes and prevents the display from going to sleep if it detects them. But you don't have Smart Pause, which pauses video playback and resumes it when you avert your eyes. Of course, you also don't have a toggle for multi-window mode. You also do not have NFC here. So NFC is not available on this phone or not integrated into the battery on this phone like it is with the standard GS5. Of course, you have screen mirroring, mobile hotspotting. You have the toolbox feature as well as ultra power saving mode. We have private mode and increased touch sensitivity. So if you enable this feature, it basically allows you to use gloved hands to operate the display. So that's very nice to have on this phone. Of course, you have quick setting toggles for Bluetooth. So you can turn on Bluetooth or if you tap and hold on any one of these icons, it will take you right to the control panel for management. We also have screen mirroring so we can wirelessly broadcast the display of this phone to a compatible device like a Samsung smart TV so we can broadcast both the display and audio works pretty nice now the toolbox feature if we enable brings up this little floating icon which kind of discreetly hides in the background while you're inter interacting with the device so for example I can launch another app it kind of fades to a translucent state and you can move it around and then when you need it you just tap it and it brings up frequently used apps now all of this is highly customizable so for example if we tap and hold this we can take it up to remove to get rid of it or we can go up here to edit so if for example we want chrome you can select that but as you can see here i have to unselect one of the other apps in order to add chrome so let's go ahead and unselect the stock browser so we can add chrome all right so now you can see that i have chrome selected here so i can quickly launch into chrome and there we go. Now blocking mode is our do not disturb feature, which is very nice to have. So we can toggle this on and off. We, we can select exactly what actions we want blocked, such as incoming calls. We can turn off notifications or turn off alarms and timers. You can also select certain times of day for this feature to activate. So as you can see here, you can select your time of day, which works really nice. 
Now also familiar from the standard GS5 is Ultra Power Saving Mode. So if we enable this, you can see it makes a dramatic impact on the battery standby time here. So you can see here with 88% charge, I have 11 days of estimated max standby time. So that's great if you're in a pinch. As you can see, your dials back, system performance, turns the screen into a grayscale screen, and generally makes this device uh, more crippled, but it gives you the battery life you need to survive, for example, a camping trip or some situation where you can't charge your phone. So as you can see here, you have a very simplified interface. So you have your phone dialer, messaging, the internet browser, and you can add three other apps, which is pretty much limited to a certain number of Samsung apps like the calculator, clock, Google+, which is interesting, the memo app, and the voice recorder. You can also go up here to turn off ultra power saving modes or go to settings. Under settings, you can toggle things off like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, mobile networks, and location, as well as sound and brightness controls. Now, we also have S Finder built right into the drop-down shade, which is very useful. I really like this feature. This allows you to search the device or the web for anything. So, for example, if we just search Android, so as you can see here, under My Files, we have Android, under S Planner, we have Android, and under Settings. You can also go up here to limit your search. So you can search by notes, conversations, images, music, videos, etc. past 30 days, seven days, yesterday, today, or the next seven days. You can see tags and location tags as well. So you have lots of searching options, and this is one of my favorite features of TouchWiz. So for example, we can launch the fingerprint scanner just by going to Fingerprint under the search app here, Fingerprint. So as you can see here, it's found under Settings, Finger Scan which is what I want to get to. So there we go. So we can go to Fingerprint Manager and what I'm going to do is swipe because I've already set up one fingerprint to recognize. I'm going to go ahead and add another one so I can show you exactly how this works. So I'm going to use my middle finger here. So I'm just going to keep swiping until it recognizes my fingerprint. So if we swipe on my index finger, it unlocks it pretty reliably. Same with my middle finger here, like so. And if I tried my thumb now, you see, it doesn't recognize it. In fact, if I keep doing this, it will eventually prompt me to enter in my passcode. Now, ultimately, I prefer to unlock my phone with my thumb, and you can train your thumb in a sideways gesture. So let me just show you how this works. Just swipe the side of your thumb like you would if you're unlocking the device while gripping it. So there we go. My thumb is trained, and you can see it works just fine. Now we also have our heart rate monitor, which is built into the S Health app. And on the home screen, we actually have an S Health widget, which allows us to quickly access the heart rate monitor. Right now, it's actually waiting for me to place my finger on the sensor so it can start measuring it. I have to click OK here to start it back up again. So let's go ahead and hold my finger right there. Now it's asking me to be still and quiet, so let's see if it works. Now Quick Connect is a portal for accessing wireless devices. So for example, we can access wireless printers or we can access other nearby devices like the Galaxy S5 Prime I have sitting right here. So I can send files or that sort of thing to that device using this feature. So it's just a one-stop spot for accessing all your available connected devices. Now Samsung has a pretty nice home screen editor here. So for example, if you want to move an app around, you can take it up to remove, you can create a folder, you can see things move out of the way when you position them and they do so pretty quickly. You can also drag and drop them to one of the available home screens down here in this nice little preview window that's at the bottom. And of course you can drag and drop them into a home screen if they fit like so. Now from the app drawer, we can also drag and drop an item here. So as you can see here, we can uninstall, we can go to app info, we can create a folder or cancel this process. Now under app info, you can see that we can force it to stop, we can uninstall it, we can disable or enable notifications, move to the SD card, clear data, you can also see all the permissions and you can see what system resources it's using right now. Now in terms of the app drawer, we have the standard suite of Samsung and Google apps. So you can see all the available Google apps such as YouTube, Play Movies, Play Music, etc. See that Flipboard has also been included, along with Smart Remote, which allows us to use the IR Blaster to control our AV equipment. And this is a little different than the Peel Smart Remote or the Watch On app, but of course you can download those apps as well. Now, not all apps are included here. So if you go up to Settings under the App Drawer, you can go to Galaxy Essentials. So instead of preloading all of the standard Samsung apps, you can go ahead and download them from the Samsung Store instead. 
Now you can see we have several options for the app drawer. We have edit, we can create a folder, we can view as, which is basically referring to the order of the item. So we can do customize grid, which allows us to order them any way we want, including into folders, or we can use the alphabetical grid, which will take them out of the folders and just show you them all in an alphabetical way. We can also see all our downloaded apps. And as you can see here, I only have one and I can go ahead and uninstall it if I want. You can also hide certain apps. So you can see that not all apps can be uninstalled, but you can hide them from view. So if you prefer just to not see them, you can, which is very useful. Now, if you hide certain apps such as Flipboard here, let's click done and you want to see them again, you just go to show hidden apps. Now, as you can see here, we also have show disabled apps. So you can see the apps that are eligible for uninstallation or disabling, and that's not all of them. So for example, if we go to the menu app, we can disable it, we can't uninstall it. Same with the studio app, we can disable it, not uninstall it, but certain apps can be uninstalled, such as this Instagram app. And if you want to see that app again, just go show disabled apps and it shows it for you. Now, in order to move apps around in the app drawer, you have to go up to edit. Otherwise, if you drag and drop, it just takes you to the home screen. So, of course, you can drag and drop them around. You can create a folder. You can see app info or create a new page for that app. So, if you go to create a new folder here, you can name it. So I'm just going to click Google and you can add as many apps as you want. So if I want to add all the Google apps in here, I can do so like this. So as you can see here, it's created a dedicated page for foldered items in the app drawer. So when I am done here, I can actually drag and drop this right to the home screen. Now we also have options under foldering and if you bring up the folder and go to edit here, you can select which color you want the folder to be. So let's go and take a look at our settings panel. So as you can see here, it's arranged into these sort of circular icons and they have their own subcategories. You can also view by list or grid or tab view. So if you go to list view, everything is continuous. I actually prefer this, but you can also select tab view, which is I think a little more familiar to Samsung TouchWiz users here. So you can see quick settings, connections, device controls, and general. But of course, you can also just search the settings panel, which is very handy. So again, if you want to get to fingerprint, all you have to do is start typing in. You get immediate uh, search results and brings it right to your panel. Now, as you see up here, we have a category for quick settings, and this is customizable. So all I have to do is go up here, edit quick settings, and select the settings panels you want included. Now, because this is a Duos phone, we do have a SIM card manager. So if you had two SIM cards installed, you would see these active. Now, you can receive phone calls from both SIM cards. So in fact, you can select that on or off, but you do have to select only one for your data service. So as you can see here, you have a toggle for receiving incoming calls. So you can receive incoming calls via other SIM cards while using data service. So you can use one SIM card for data and one for phone. Now let's quickly take a look at our settings panel. So you can see we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, tethering, and mobile hotspotting, airplane mode, data usage information. So you can see how much data you're using. Uh, you have your location settings, SIM card manager, and more networks. This is where you can set up your mobile networks or your APNs for your SIM cards. You also have printing services, so you can see all the available plugins, and you can download additional plugins. And then you have screen mirroring for broadcasting your display wisely to a compatible device such as your Samsung Smart TV. Under sound, you can disable those annoying touch sounds right here. So all those blooping sound that, you, that you're hearing throughout this video, you can disable. You also have screen lock sounds and lots of other granular controls. Under display, we have our screen mode settings. So this is where you can enable an adapt display. So if you tap on that, that shows you exactly what adapt display does. So it'll automatically adjust the display depending on the content you're viewing, which is nice. Now under lock screen, this is where you can enable such things as dual clock, uh, clock size. You can show dates, owner information. You can add or disable the camera shortcut or lock automatically or lock instantly with the power key. But what you can also do is manage the additional information section, which is the pedometer and weather. So you can toggle those on and off if you prefer. Easy mode is a way of simplifying the interface for certain users. So for example, if we select easy mode, now easy mode is essentially grandma mode. It's a simplified interface that is geared toward certain type of users. So for example, you have a magnifier right here. You can see we have these quick widgets for weather, our calendar, as well as our clock. You have a quick widget here for your LED flashlight on the back and then you have all the major app surface on the front and they're larger so the icons are larger and you can add additional apps here so you can select any of the apps that are available from your app drawer and add it to the home screen you can also see your more app drawer here you can see it's got a different type of interface here and then if you swipe down from the drop down you get to your uh, notifications and your quick settings which is the same as the standard interface and if you swipe all the way to the right you can add some quick contacts so instead of searching for an address they can just tap on a contact to call them.
We also have all of our accessibility tools available right here. You have your blocking modes, which you can customize. And then we have private mode, which allows us to hide certain photographs and documents or that sort of thing using a passcode. So let's click next and set this up. So you can see private mode is only available with certain applications such as the gallery, the video player, the music player, the voice recorder, and my files. So if we click next here, click start, and we have to enter in a pen. So I'm going to use my fingerprint as the authentication here. So private mode has been turned on. In fact, if you bring down your drop down shade, you'll see it right there. So what private mode allows me to do is hide certain items from the phone so that other users can't see it without entering a passcode. So for example, if we go to the photo gallery here, if I go to my camera shots, and let me go ahead and just select this camera shot here. I'm going to go up here to settings and I'm going to scroll down to select move to private. So now it's been encrypted and it's now hidden in private mode. So if I go back here, you can see I have a private folder. And now what happens if I disable private mode, that image will disappear. So if I want to regain access to that file, I just toggle on private mode, swipe down, and you will see it reappear. We also have our finger scanner settings and this is where you can manage them. So for example, if we go to fingerprint manager, we do have to swipe in to authenticate. This is where you can, for example, tap and hold on fingerprint one and you can go ahead and start deleting them if you prefer or rename them. We also have motions and gestures. So for example, if we have direct call on, all you have to do is raise it to your ear to answer a phone call when it's ringing. We have smart alert. So if you lift your phone up and there's a pending notification, it will vibrate for you. We also have mute and pause so you can Enable this by covering the screen with your hand or you can turn the device over so you can toggle that on and off and that's off by default. You also have palm swipe to screen grab. So all I have to do is swipe on the screen to make a screen grab. We also have air view available on this device. It's toggled off by default, but this works with certain Samsung apps such as the S Planner, the Gallery, the Video Player and the Phone Dialer. All I have to do is hover your finger over the display without actually touching it and it will pop up some information such as an event in a calendar or the thumbnails in a photo gallery. So it works kind of nice. You also have your storage and as you can see this is 16 gigs and you can see that right now I'm using up quite a bit of it. Uh, the system takes about 4 gigs and the use space about 2.4 gigs. So you can see not a lot of storage here but of course you do have an SD card slot to expand storage 64 gigs above what's included. Now under power saving we have two options. So we have the ultra power saving mode I talked about earlier. Then we have the standard power saving mode which gives us a little more control. So for example if we enable this you can restrict the background data. If you tap on it it tells you exactly what it's going to do. You also have restrict performance. And this allows you to dial back CPU performance, turn off the touch key lights, turn off GPS, and a few other things which you can toggle on and off. And as you can see here, when you enable this feature, it does take a while to dial back performance. But you can see here we have screen timeout, uh, we have turn off key light and turn off GPS, and all of this you can manage individually. Now you can also enable grayscale mode, which ultra power saving mode also does. Now kids mode is a child friendly interface for your phone. What it does is restrict access to only certain kid friendly apps here which they can interact with without interacting with your phone. They can't delete apps, purchase apps, have access to things you don't want them to have access to, text messages, that sort of thing. And you can exit this mode just by tapping in your passcode. Now taking a quick look at the included Samsung keyboard, this does lack the handwriting input of the full size GS5 but of course you have your voice keyboard here. This is a test of the voice keyboard period. All right, so let's take a look at the camera app. So you can pinch in and out to zoom in, tap anywhere on the scene to adjust exposure and focus, and it does it pretty quickly. You can snap your photograph, you can start recording video. While recording video, you can pause it and resume it or snap a photograph discreetly without that shutter sound. You can also enable your flash. So if you want to turn that on to auto, off or on, you can switch between the front facing and rear facing camera as well. So there I am. And then you have your classic mode selector here. So you have auto mode, beauty face, shot and more, which is kind of different. I'll take a look at that. We have panorama, virtual tour, continuous shot, HDR, rich tone. We can also manage our modes here. So if we go to the manager here, you can uncheck or recheck items if you want to remove them from that list. And as you can see here, we can download additional modes from Samsung Store. 
So as you can see here, we really only have two of them, Sports Shot and Sound and Shot to add. Now if we go to settings, you can see our picture size. So we have six megapixels or eight megapixels, which is maximum, but of course that is four by three aspect ratio instead of widescreen 16 by nine. You also have picture stabilization, which you can turn on or off. We also have our video sizes, so we can go from full HD to 720p to VGA. Now let's take a look at shot and more. Now this is kind of interesting because you can't always pick the right mode for your specific scene. This actually allows you to apply those modes after you've taken your photograph. So what it does is take a burst shot. So if we uh, hit the shutter release, it takes a bunch of photos all at once, starts processing it for us. Now, depending on the photograph, you can select the proper mode. So, for example, you have best face, drama shot, eraser, and panning shot available. But as you can see, they're all grayed out. The only one it detects that's available here is best photo. So, if you go and select that, you can go ahead and select the photograph you want and click best photo right there. Now, in terms of camera quality, I'm really impressed by this camera. While it doesn't have the high-end specs of the full-size GS5, it delivers sharp, colorful, and vivid images that are well-balanced and natural. And the video results are also really impressive. Again, 1080p at 30 frames per second, not 4K, but definitely excellent results at 1080p. Now, it doesn't give you stabilization like you get with the still camera. So unfortunately, it's hard to get really smooth shots out of the camera. But again, excellent exposure, excellent contrast. It's not blown out. Color reproduction is good. So generally speaking, this is a really solid camera phone. Alrighty guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the front-facing camera, the GS5 Mini, which is, again, 2.1 megapixels, good for 1080p HD video at 30 frames per second, which is a pretty decent spec for a kind of budget-minded phone. This also gives you an idea of the audio pickup of the camera, which is, I think, pretty decent. Now, unfortunately, this phone does lack the duo shot feature of the dual mode, which allows you to record both the front-facing and rear-facing cameras at the same time, and I'm sure that's related to the fact that this phone is sporting pretty low-end specs. So if we take a look at our Geekbench 3 scores, you can see there's a massive difference between the GS5 Mini and the GS5 Prime in this case. So the GS5 Prime has a Snapdragon 805 clocked at 2.5 gigahertz with three gigs of RAM versus the GS5 Mini, which is with that 1.4 gigahertz Exynos processor and one and a half gigs of RAM. So huge difference in performance and that's to be expected with the specs and the pricing. Now like the GS4, I think the GS5 Mini branding is a little misleading. It's not just a skill down version of the full-size GS5. So if you're hoping for just a more compact version of the GS5, this really isn't it. It has much lower end internal specs, a much lower resolution display, a weaker camera system, and it lacks some of the software features of the full-size GS5 and certainly the performance. But it has a lot of the visual identity of the GS5, so you have a very similar interface with TouchWiz, you have a similar design overall, and you have some similar features. So we have our fingerprint sensor, we have a heart rate monitor, and we have that water and dust protection with a twist. You have an exposed USB port instead of a covered USB port, which is actually quite nice. Now that Super AMOLED display it has excellent off-axis viewing angles, bright and vivid colors with deep contrast. So again, a really nice experience. But at 720p at 326 PPI, it's not a really sharp display. Now 326 PPI is the same as the iPhone, but this is a sub-pixel display. So it's kind of cheating. It doesn't really have the sharpness of a 326 PPI because it has the sub-pixel technology of a lower-end Super AMOLED display. So that's a little disappointing here. You're going to notice it if you look really closely, if you look at text, or if you look at icons or that sort of thing. But for most people, I think this display is plenty sharp enough. Now in the end, the GS5 Mini offers many of the capabilities and features of the full-size flagship phone while giving us a budget-minded phone that isn't too large. So this is appealing for a lot of people, and just like the GS4 Mini, this is destined to be one of the best-selling smartphones in the world. So that's going to do it for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.